everyone. It's Frankie Lou and Angus and we're here today to talk to you about greenhouses. This is kind of our happy place. We really love our greenhouse. Um, we chose to build this three years ago now and yeah. um, it's been a huge godsend for us. So I guess this video is about if you're considering greenhouses, here's some things you should consider. And we're not teaching you how to build one. <laughs> no, but we can give you some tips on uh, things that you should be considering when you are, are uh, thinking about building a greenhouse or purchasing a package and things that I've noticed have made a huge difference for us in terms of our growing. So, uh, A, why? Why do we have a greenhouse? Well, uh, we're here in zone three. This portion of Springbank is true zone three, which means that we have an extremely short growing season. Yeah, it's sad. <laughs> we, like we have two days of warm and then, well, then it starts snowing. <laughs> it does seem that way sometimes. We actually have had killing frost mid-June well, Jill, yeah, mid-June, and we've then had our first frost of the year arriving at the end of August. So that doesn't give us a lot of time. So one of the number one reasons to have a greenhouse yeah, we have one more. Is, to, two months, is to extend the season, okay? But it's also for protection against other elements because um, frost is definitely one of the things we've got to worry about there, but there's something that literally hits us pretty hard here. What's that? I guess. Hail. Hail. It's oh. like it's like f falling soccer balls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hail here is brutal. I've never seen anything like it. Um, and it always comes at the end of July, beginning in, of August, when our plants are just starting to look good. Uh, Angus lost most of his crops last year for his his uh, fall fair his fall fair box, but. Um, and honestly, it killed almost everything but the potatoes. Like everything that wasn't in the greenhouse really took a hit. Other elements that it protects against, and one that we had today, it was a beautiful day, 17 degrees, lovely, but the wind was so intense that um, we couldn't put seedlings out, but I can put them out here in the greenhouse so that they're getting some nice real sun and some hardening off. And I can do that for a good month before it goes into the ground. Okay, so that is something to consider. The wind is a huge issue here where we are and the greenhouse really helps with that, doesn't it? Yeah. So mm -hmm. one of the reasons that this greenhouse is good is the polycarbonate. Oh yes. Okay, I guess we're going right into materials. All right. Uh, so polycarbon polycarbonate. We have some to demonstrate. Yes. Now, I know that a lot of people, when they think greenhouse, they think glass. No! Because it's pretty. And, but remember, we just talked about hail, okay? And, on, and hail, hail will break glass. Yep. But uh, polycarbonate is what they use to make some types of bulletproof glass. Yes. <laughs> it's actually... Because so, it's designed to deform and not break. Yes. So when you have it up in your roof panels, the the hail might bend it a little bit, but it won't shatter. It won't shatter it. And that yeah, is... Yeah, you, you can bend it. Oh, flexes. yeah, it's also flexible. See, it's super flexible. It's great to work with. I can cut this. I cut this with my circular saw. I don't need a special glass cutter. I can make it into any shape I want. That's a huge benefit when you're building... Um, a greenhouse like this which is all different levels because I have different levels in my yard and I worry about the heaving so um, polycarbonate is something that's really wonderful to work with it's not absolutely clear but it's still very very good and it also has this double wall it's like corrugated cardboard sort of it's a corrugated yeah, product it's, yeah and so it provides really good insulation it's nice and flexible it's yeah. super easy to work with I uh, just put drills holes in it. Put oh yeah, you can wood drill on either side. It. It's fantastic. One thing that you should do though, if you want to help the um, right. wildlife, yep. is cover up the like and the sides of it because mason bees will. Yeah, we've discovered this. Will uh, think that it's a hive and then they'll die, and then yeah. their eggs will die. Like. We have um, a couple of dead mason yeah, bees. Yeah, right there. There's because I didn't seal off the end here, so that's a good tip, I guess, because these little corrugated holes are a perfect size for some types of mason bees. Yeah. So, um, yes, a material I definitely would um, recommend is polycarbonate, uh, not glass. One of the one of the elements we didn't discuss was sunlight. 
And that's one of the other main reasons to use polycarbonate instead of glass. Yeah. Because um, glass magnifies the intensity of the sun. Pretty much. Now, in Delta, where I'm from, that wasn't a big deal because it's There's nice so and misty mist. and stuff. But here in Calgary, when we do get the, that short burst of sunlight, holy man, is it intense. And I have seen people lose an entire crop of tomatoes in one day because they didn't understand the intensity of the sun here. We're not talking about that yet. We will in a minute. Um, and then another thing you want to talk about when you're designing your greenhouse. So the material that you actually build it with, polycarbonate, if you can afford to get yourself a hard greenhouse right away, I recommend polycarbonate over glass yeah. any day of the week. And also where the sun comes in directly, you get this stuff, it's called either copper poly or blue poly. Yeah. It just like has a very dark tint to it. It has a dark tint to it and it doesn't, it, it uh, lowers the intensity of the sun. Some people actually use it as a shade on it. Now, the other thing that you want to think about when you're thinking about your greenhouse is the size of the greenhouse. Um, we went for as large as we could go. Yes, there, it's about four square feet. Yeah, um, large as we could go without having to have a permit. Okay, that's something you might want to consider. It is a permanent structure. So um, you, you where depending on where you are, you're going to have bylaws uh, about what you can build here. Ours is nine and a half feet by 10 feet because a hundred square feet is a permittable building here. Yep. So we, we're made, we made it exactly five square feet. <laughs> Less than, than permitted size. That, that was a very good reason for us. But um, uh, the other thing you want to do is you want to go as big as you can go within the structure, within your restrictions of the space that you have available. Working at a garden center, I never had a single person ever say to me, oh, I wish my greenhouse was smaller. No, no. <laughs> Some people even put dinner tables. Yes, because once you have a greenhouse, you'll be spending a lot of time in it. And if anything, you're going to be coming back a year later and wanting to build a bigger one or build an extension onto your greenhouse. Because the amount that you can grow and how pleasant it is to be in a greenhouse, you really can't begin to understand until you start doing it. We have three beds in here, three raised beds, which are, um, and honestly, the amount of food that I can produce for my family on these three beds is equivalent to like 10 beds out in the main yard. So it's really worthwhile if that's important to you. Um, it is expensive. I'm not going to lie. I did bang this puppy together for about a grand, um, which might seem expensive, but I always say it's cheaper than therapy because honestly... <laughs> the amount of pleasure that we get out of being in here and also um the 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 amount of heartache i don't go through because this didn't this area didn't get destroyed by hail or frost i can't really put a value on okay so it is definitely worthwhile it's priceless, it's, it's priceless. there and honestly angus hangs out in here with me we love it in here yep I think we should make like a retractable dinner table that comes out and then we flip it and we can eat dinner yeah. in the greenhouse. There you go. Now, another thing you want to consider when you're designing it is the, the orientation and something that you could never have enough of, and that is ventilation. Uh, that's another thing a lot of people think, oh, I can just put a little fan in there. It'll be fine. Oh, I'll put one or two Definitely vents. Not. That'll be fine. No, we have several vents. We actually are. I don't know if you can see the design here, but all along both this face and this face, there's actually a vent that is open most of the time. We plug it with uh, bubble wrap, bubble during, wrap the winter. during the winter and during this time of the year where it still gets below zero. But during the summer, that's open constantly. I also designed it so that the doors are have, to have two pieces yep. that one opens for the top so that it gets ventilated. Yeah. And, and there's the... a breeze through. Yeah. So basically the roof, it's, it's oriented so that it's south facing with a door or with an open vent on the top on both the west and the east side. And I don't have to have a fan in here because I do that. Um, it does save me a little bit of money in terms of having to run a fan. And honestly, I, in the, the true summer, I'll, I'll open these doors right up. And then I get a nice breeze through and lots of ventilation because you really can't estimate how much that ventilation is important. Today in this greenhouse, 
even though it's still spring here and it was 17 degrees outside, it was 33 degrees in this greenhouse. So if you're thinking that it's 30 degrees outside, imagine how hot it can get in here. So that ventilation is critical. Also good water source. Make sure that you have a system set up that you're gonna, I came in here and missed it a couple days times today with the hose because uh, the humidity, you wanna keep your humidity up in your greenhouse as well. Now, another, another thing that um, I wanna tell you that's indispensable if you're gonna have a greenhouse, Angus is gonna demonstrate for you right now. And he's holding it in his hand there. He's <laughs> It's a, it's a very important tool. It's called a minimum maximum thermometer. Yes. So the way it works is so there's like, so there's some tubes and so the higher the mercury goes on one, um, the colder it is and the lower the, and the higher the low mercury goes on the other one, the hotter it is. So they, there's these things that move up and down. If they depending. stay in place though, once they've reached their maximums. So, um, and then once, so every day if you, if you hold down on this button, yeah, they'll come down. And you then, can reset it. Yeah. So basically what this thing does is it, it records for you every day what your maximum temperature was in your greenhouse and what your minimum temperature was in and your it greenhouse. It currently says it, it's 26 so degrees. So at a time like this, when I've got seedlings in here, I want to know if I can leave my seedlings in here tonight. Okay, so I'm not prepared to do that yet because I wanna record these temperatures over four or five days. I have bought a little heater and a little timer that I got set up so that I can run, run that through the night because I wanna keep my temperature in here minimum five degrees with my seedlings. It'd be ideal would be nine degrees or higher, but yeah, yeah, at least 10 eternal. degrees. No, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Even, even in July here, it's not consistently 10 degrees at night. So um, the min-max thermometer lets me know how cold it's getting at night, whether my heater's doing the right work, whether I need to up it. And I monitor that for a few days before I decide I can leave my stuff out here permanently. Okay. So quick recap. Um, Build a greenhouse. <laughs> yeah, really? That's, you do want to build a greenhouse? If you don't want to build it yourself, I get it. We love to build stuff. We're always building stuff. But um, if you don't want to build it yourself, if you live in Calgary, honestly, Garden and Retreat is your best, best source. You can get all these materials there. You can get the polycarbonate. I, uh, you can get, and if you don't want to build it, they'll build it for you. And you can buy a package that's pre-made. I wanted to build my own. That's the kind of person I am. But you, you can get easy and spend a lot of money and spend as much money as you like. It's yeah. great. Go for the polycarbonate. Get yourself a min-max thermometer. You might want to have one of those anyways because honestly, out in your garden beds, you might want to know what temperature it's reaching at night because, you know, the weather network isn't always very accurate. And, um, yeah, maintain your ventilation. That's really important when you're considering design. And... Cover up the holes on the <laughs> Yeah, so you don't kill your mason bees. So if you have any questions about that that you want Angus or I to answer, please just let us know in the comments on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And um, if you have any questions about greenhouses and you're and, and you don't and you don't want to leave a comment and you live in Calgary, then call Garden the Retreat. Garden Retreat will be able to help you out. They're call really great. Them. Okay, so have a great day. I hope you consider this. Like I said, it's not a cheap enterprise, but it's super fun and it's, it is cheaper than therapy. All right. Have a great day.